when this uh, ice reservoir faces the sun, it sublimates, it evaporates, and you end up getting a puff of gas and dust into space and when it goes away into the night side facing away from the sun then uh, no emission of gas or dust comes off it because it's getting very cold it's frozen and so periodically as the object rotates one gets puffs of uh, gas and dust in the direction of the sun triggering uh, a plume of gas and dust the coma uh, just like a heartbeat feeding blood into the veins of uh, an organ. Another possibility is that if the object is technological in origin, uh, perhaps there is some inner cycle of activity within this technological object that has a period of 16 hours and therefore uh, there are uh, ejections of uh, jets from the object that are modulated periodically over 16 hours. For example, if these are thrusters, which are used for navigation and uh, perhaps the puff of gas from those thrusters is modulated periodically. 3i Atlas has begun to flash with a rhythm so steady, so eerily biological, that some scientists have compared it to a heartbeat. The object has been shedding periodic puffs of gas and dust that scatter sunlight into space, producing a pulse of brightness every 16.16 hours. To most researchers, this is a curious but natural result of sunlight striking volatile ices on a rotating comet. Yet to others, including Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, the possibility of a technological origin cannot be ignored. The flashes, he argues, could represent something far more deliberate, perhaps an internal engine cycle, or even thrusters used for navigation could expel bursts of gas that appear identical to sublimation jets when viewed from afar. Whether these pulses follow the sun's orientation is the critical test. If every pulse erupts when the object faces the sun, then sublimation is the most likely cause. But if the brightening occurs at angles unrelated to sunlight, that would weaken the natural interpretation and lend weight to the idea of a manual manufactured system. One detail puzzled Loeb even more. An analysis of the Hubble image taken on July 21, 2025, showed that the nucleus, the solid core, contributed less than 10% of the total light. Nearly all the brightness originated from the coma, the cloud of gas and dust surrounding the nucleus. If the pulse were simply caused by one illuminated patch on the rotating nucleus, one might expect a more significant proportion of the light to come from that core. Instead, the glow was overwhelmingly dominated by the diffuse cloud around it. That observation, Loeb argued, made the rotation explanation less straightforward. To determine what is truly driving the pulses, Loeb emphasized the need for continuous monitoring. By observing the object over time, ideally capturing a full sequence of brightening events, scientists could compare each pulse to the sun's direction. If the variations line up with solar illumination, then the sublimation theory holds. But if the pulses come from other angles, then researchers will have to consider more unusual interpretations, including the technological logical hypothesis. Over the next several weeks, data will begin flowing in from hundreds of ground observatories, along with the James Webb Space Telescope and additional Hubble observations. These combined datasets may finally reveal what kind of object we are dealing with. 3i Atlas first came to attention in July, when NASA's Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, Atlas, detected a faint, fast-moving body streaking across the southern sky from Chile. Early calculations showed that it was not gravitationally bound to the Sun, making it only the third confirmed interstellar object ever observed visiting our solar system. That is why scientists named it 3i Atlas, the third interstellar object and Atlas after the system that detected it. At first, NASA described it as a cold, ancient icy wanderer likely dating back billions of years. It was approaching from the direction of Sagittarius and posed no danger to Earth, expected to pass by at a safe 150 million mile distance. But as scientists continued to analyze it, 3i Atlas began displaying one anomaly after another. Loeb became one of the most vocal skeptics of the standard comet interpretation. In August, he wrote that the object seemed to be producing its own light. After examining NASA's released photographs, he and a colleague concluded that the brightness distribution made more sense if the light were coming from a compact source, less than 100 meters across, rather than being purely reflected sunlight. From this, he proposed that the nucleus could, in principle, house a nuclear engine or some other form of artificial power source. Not surprisingly, Loeb's blog drew strong criticism from many astronomers. Some accused him of irresponsible speculation, pointing out that 3i Atlas's overall path and behavior fit well within the range of expectations for a comet. They argued that once it approached close enough to the sun, the object would behave like any 
other comet, showing jets, brightness changes, and outgassing just like thousands of comets observed before. Others stress that strange behavior does not automatically imply artificial origins. Cometary physics is complex, and many bodies exhibit irregularities when heated. In fact, the CO2 output was calculated to be 16 times higher than what scientists would expect from a comet exposed to the same level of solar heating. Equally baffling was the comparative absence of water and carbon monoxide, two substances that almost always accompany CO2 in comet outgassing and often dominate it. Their scarcity suggested either that the object had an unusually exotic composition or that an entirely different process was generating the emissions. Avi Loeb drew attention to this imbalance in another of his blog posts, pointing out that no standard comet model could account for such a skewed chemical profile. To him, the data represented another clue that 3i Atlas might not be behaving like a conventional natural object at all. Then came an even more startling chemical signature. 3i Atlas began emitting nickel tetracarbonyl, a molecule never before detected in any natural cosmic environment. The compound's presence was so unexpected that it immediately set off debates within the scientific community. Nickel tetracarbonyl is highly unusual, even on Earth. It's not something that appears in nature under ordinary conditions. Instead, it is a synthetic, industrial compound carefully produced through controlled chemical reactions. Its volatility, reactivity, and ability to form under only very specific temperatures and pressures make it an unlikely candidate for spontaneous creation in space. On Earth, this molecule has a very narrow set of uses. It is employed in specialized metallurgical and aerospace processes, where its ability to coat surfaces with layers of pure nickel makes it valuable for strengthening components, enhancing corrosion resistance, or improving performance in extreme environments. For that reason, seeing it emerge from an interstellar object left experts baffled. No known astronomical mechanism, no combination of solar radiation, cosmic chemistry, or impact processes has ever been shown to generate nickel tetracarbonyl naturally. Its appearance on 3i Atlas, therefore, stood out as one of the most baffling and provocative clues yet yet, raising questions about whether the object had undergone some unknown chemical evolution in the depths of interstellar space, or whether its odd signature hinted at processes far outside the realm of ordinary cometary physics. The object's behavior grew more exotic as it moved closer to the sun. As it approached perihelion, the point of closest contact to our star, it underwent dramatic changes in color. Images captured during the stage showed it glowing red, almost ominously, surrounded by a dense, conspicuous cloud. Although, scientists expected some outgassing, the intensity exceeded predictions. Later, as it continued its trajectory, the object appeared to shift to a bluish tone. Loeb suggested that if the blue glow was not a natural scattering effect, it might be caused by an artificial heat source or engine. Meanwhile, data reported by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory seemed to indicate that 3i Atlas was experiencing an acceleration that could not be explained by gravity alone. Many comets accelerate slightly when jets of gas act like miniature rockets, but this object showed significantly more acceleration than its visible outgassing should produce. Loeb argued that if this acceleration was real, it might point to an internal propulsion mechanism rather than simple sublimation. The signs of complexity continued. Images captured on November 8 revealed an intricate, multi-jet pattern shooting from the object. Loeb interpreted the pattern as possibly reflecting a set of thrusters used for maneuvering. The jet arrangement looked structured, more organized than what random sublimation typically produces. However, 3i Atlas did not break apart when it rounded the sun on October 29. Earth-based telescopes could not observe it at that moment because the sun was directly between it and Earth. But once it reappeared, scientists found it had survived its solar encounter. It continued emitting jets, and new observations showed two extraordinarily thin streams of material extending in opposite directions, one toward the sun and one away. Loeb began exploring whether these lines could have been formed by tidal forces stretching fragments of the object, possibly pulling pieces across distances of a million kilometers or more. Despite all these unusual signatures, many researchers still insist that 3i Atlas is a comet. In late October, an important piece of supporting evidence emerged when South Africa's Meerkat radio telescope finally detected radio absorption lines from hydroxyl radicals surrounding the object. Hydroxyl forms when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart water molecules. Two earlier attempts to find the signature had failed, but the successful detection in October suggested that the object was indeed releasing water albeit in smaller amounts than expected. Because water breakdown is a classic sign of cometary behavior, this finding strengthened the natural interpretation. Scientists will soon have their best chance to settle the debate. On December 19, 2025, 3i Atlas will make its closest approach to Earth. NASA expects new sets of images from Hubble and Webb in early December, adding to the hundreds of observations being gathered around the globe. Researchers hope to measure
measure the jet's velocities, determine their composition, and estimate how much mass the object has lost during its solar passage. If the jet's speeds match what sublimation should produce from icy surfaces, then the natural explanation becomes more convincing. But if the jets are significantly faster than physics predicts, or if they originate in directions unrelated to solar heating, then alternative possibilities will demand attention. Loeb insists that regardless of the outcome, the arrival of 3i Atlas is a moment of rare cosmic fortune. Interstellar objects almost never pass this close to Earth, and each one carries information about distant star systems and extreme environments. He compares the encounter to an unexpected lucky meeting, a blind date with the unknown, suggesting that humanity should seize the opportunity while it lasts. As the strange traveler continues its path through the solar system, its rhythmic flashes remain both a puzzle and an invitation. Whether its heartbeat proves to be ice cracking under sunlight or something more extraordinary, 3i Atlas has already reminded scientists that the universe is full of surprises, and sometimes even the smallest flicker can hint at something vast and unexplored.